Hey everyone. So today we are going to talk about improper integrals of type one. So in my earlier lecture we talked about what are improper integrals and what is type one and type two. So if you have not seen that lecture, then my strong suggestion is please have a look. Link you can find in the description. So there I have told you why the need of improper integrals. Okay. So now in the last lecture I gave you one example to solve as a homework. So if you recall, the problem was. This problem, okay, one to infinity e raised to minus x dx. Now, what I think, I mean, that what I have observed in this past years, that if I tell someone to solve this, what they do is they know that antiderivative of this is minus e raised to minus x, or say, let me take yeah, one to infinity suppose. Okay, and what is this? They what they do? This is e raised to minus infinity minus minus e raised to minus one. And they say e raised to minus infinity is nothing but one upon e raised to infinity, which is zero. And then you say e raised to minus one is the answer. But then this was okay, like if you you were in your plus two or twelfth or eleventh. But now you are if you are doing engineering and if you are seeing this, then no, this is totally wrong because you have studied fundamental theorem of calculus. You know the concept of antiderivative and all. And you also know that now you cannot apply Riemann theory because the domain is unbounded, thanks to my previous lecture. Okay, so question is how will you solve this problem? Well, you will get the same answer in this scenario, the way I am doing, which is the correct way of doing. But this is the wrong way of doing, and you may not always get the correct answer if you simply put infinity. Now, why you can't put infinity? See, you there you have written e raised to minus infinity. See, infinity is not a number. Okay, it's a symbol that just represents that your x is going, is keeping on increasing. It will never stop. Okay, so that that phrase is represented by this symbol. It's not a number, so you can't put e raised to minus infinity like that. Okay, so that's the first mistake you had, and then this is the antiderivative is e raised to minus x. So if you recall my fundamental theorem of calculus two, there we know that if you have closed and bounded interval, that's the first thing, and you have the derivative. Then this is nothing but f of capital B minus f of sorry f of B minus f of A. This was my FTC two, right? So for that you want the domain should be closed and bounded. So here you can't simply say that here the domain is not closed and bounded and infinity is not a number. So putting e raised to minus infinity and applying FTC two doesn't make sense. So that is the mistake you did if you have solved that way. But it's okay, not your problem. It happens. Now let me tell you the correct way of doing. So see what is the problem over here? The problem here is your domain is unbounded, right? One to infinity. What you do is you bring b into the picture, some number b. Okay. Now what you do is you integrate from one to b. E raised to minus x dx. Is the function continuous? Yes. Is the domain closed and bounded? Yes. Can I apply FTC? Yes, because antiderivative exists. What is antiderivative? Minus e raised to minus x, and then you write one to b. And what is this? Minus e raised to minus b plus e raised to minus one. Right. So this infinity was the problem. So what I did? I took this b into the picture and then I solved this integral. And now what you do? You take this b going towards infinity. So the definition is you rewrite this as limit b going to infinity integration one to b. So this is the definition of improper integral. I will write the definition in a moment. But I want to tell you that why this limit comes into picture. So now, once you have this been to the picture, you do this integration, and now you apply the limit. So when I apply this limit, this limit is here. This limit is here. Now, as b goes to infinity, e raised to minus b goes to zero, and then you have one upon e. So this improper integral converges to one upon e. If you heard what I said, I said converges to. Okay, whenever you have limit into the picture, the phrase convergent and divergent do comes. Why convergent? See, because see, one upon e raised to b, this will never be zero because the numerator is not zero. So this will never be zero. But as b increases, this will approach towards zero. This will be very close to zero. Okay, so like that's why I said this is approaching to zero. So the area under the curve. For this function over this domain, that area will approach to one by e. Okay, 
but well we never say approaching we always write equal to but yeah that's what it means it will approach to 1 by e which is a finite number so whenever the improper integral gives you the finite number we say that such improper integral converges and if the value comes out to be infinite we say that the improper integral diverges okay so that's how one should solve and actually what we are doing over here so ultimately we were in the world of improper right so we were in the world of improper integral of type 1 where the domain is unbounded infinity was the problem so what you do is you remove infinity by bringing this limit into the picture so a is some fixed lower limit and you this here it was infinity so you bring b over here now because of this what what is happening because of this thing you are going into the world of Riemann because the function is continuous domain is bounded so you are in the world of Riemann and you can apply Riemann theory fundamental theorem of calculus all nice nice things you can apply once you solve the integration you again apply this limit you limit b going to infinity you apply this limit you again come back to the world of improper integral so this limit is helping me to go from the world of improper to the world of Riemann you do all good good calculation you can apply the limit and you come back to the world of improper integral of type 1 so this is the transition we are doing okay now let me give you the proper definition of improper integral of type 1 and then we will take some more examples so there can be three possibilities for an unbounded domain so first thing here is suppose you have a to infinity so you have a continuous function on close a comma infinity then how do you define this integral so this this is a problem infinity so you remove your problem by bringing b into the picture now you are in the Riemann world apply the Riemann theory you get answer in terms of b and apply take limit b going to infinity you get the answer what can be another scenario you have minus infinity to something b like minus infinity to 4 minus infinity to minus 1 something like that then again this bottom is a problem so you remove that so a to b f of x dx and then what you take you take limit a going to minus infinity okay and when you have minus infinity to minus infinity what you do is you bring some c into the picture so minus infinity to c plus integral c to infinity f of x dx now this is of this second type i mean one type 1.2 and this is of type 1.1 so you know how to solve this too by bringing this this limit into the picture where c is any number between minus infinity to infinity so, so you can take c any number doesn't make a difference you get the same answer usually i take 0 because 0 is a good number not in the exam <laughs> but uh, yeah for calculation 0 is very good okay so these are the three possible scenarios in type 1 now let's see some examples so here is the problem integration 1 to infinity dx upon x raised to e so as soon as you see the unbounded domain okay so improper integral of type 1 okay now what you do this infinity is a problem so you remove this infinity so this is the definition so here the reason will come by definition of improper integral type 1 okay good now once the domain is bounded and this what is the integral what is the antiderivative x minus e plus 1 upon minus e plus 1 1 to b right so therefore by ftc2 this is limit b going to infinity 1 upon 1 minus e b raised to 1 minus e minus 1 okay the reason here will be your ftc2 because the domain is closed and bounded so you can apply ftc2 not a problem good now you take b going to infinity now as you can see this part is negative why because our e is what 2.7 something so therefore our 1 minus e is negative so is so that means what this will come in the denominator whenever the power is negative y raised to alpha if alpha is negative means what it will be suppose you have y raised to minus 3 something is negative that means what 1 upon y cube so the power is negative so as b goes to infinity you have 1 upon infinity which is 0 so therefore this will become 0 so you have minus 1 upon 1 minus e or 1 upon e minus 1 so this integral converges to this so therefore area under the curve for this function which function f of x equal to 1 upon x raised to e 
is integral over 1 to infinity or area under the curve over the domain 1 to infinity converges to 1 upon e minus 1. So that's what the area is. Okay, uh, so it converges. It may need not always converge. Suppose if I give you uh, integral 1 to infinity dx upon x. You try to solve this, your answer will be plus or minus infinity. So it will diverge. Okay, so it need not always converge. So this is an example of a convergent improper integral. This is an example of a divergent improper integral. Try to solve this. If you don't get, let me know. I will let you know. But at least you can comment whether the answer is infinite, plus infinite or the minus infinite for this problem. Okay, so that's the first homework for you. So pause the video, solve this problem and tell whether the answer is plus or minus infinite. Okay, good. Now, why I could directly tell that 1 upon x diverges because there is a very nice theorem that we are going to use a lot. So that's why I am stating over here which is called as an p integral test. What does this theorem says? Whenever you have an integral from a to infinity dx upon x raised to p then this integral always converges for p greater than 1 and it always diverges for p less equal 1. So whenever your p is bigger than 1 this will always give you some finite value and when p is less equal 1 this will give you an infinite value where a is some positive number your a is what some positive number so now if you so that's why if you see i gave this this thing right my p is 1 my x this lower limit is positive fine my p is 1 so whenever p is 1 this diverges earlier question was x raised to e e is what 2.7 which is greater than 1 so by this theorem it converges if I ask you what about integral 2 to infinity 1 upon x raised to pi dx you know pi is 3.14 something so definitely it is bigger than 1 so you can directly say in a second that this converges what value that you can tell me later on by solving it but at least you know that it will come out to be a finite value and not the infinite value so this is the p integral test which we are going to use a lot so now let's see this last example and then I will give you two three homework problems. So now here you can see the domain is unbounded. So this is improper integral of type 1. So since this infinity is a problem, so what is the first step we do? So let me call this as i equal to. What is the first thing? You remove the infinity. How do you remove the infinity? You bring some variable b into the picture. So that's the first thing and this is the question which you have. And then you take limit b going to infinity so here by definition of improper integral okay good now the domain is bounded and uh, your function which is 1 upon t square plus 5t plus 6 is never 0 in this domain okay good now how do you solve this i don't know the integration of this but uh, whenever you see the quadratic stuff what is the obvious thing you think think of you try to factorize this so what is this this is t plus 3 into t plus 2 so this is nothing but t plus 3 into t plus 2 good now second thing now when you have an integration and you have the product in the denominator what do you do you think of partial fraction so if you try to go by partial fraction so what do you get minus 1 to b so this is a upon t plus 3 plus b upon t plus 2 the standard technique that you have learned in your plus 2 so if you try to do that over here t plus 2 t plus 3 3 minus 1 1 yeah so this is what you get when you do the partial fraction i have done this directly because yeah i have become pretty much handy with this but it's okay those who don't know how to do this you apply your standard partial fraction technique and you will get this as an answer okay now what is the next thing you do so this is limit b going to infinity you take your integral inside right so this is integral minus 1 to b dt upon t plus 2 minus integration minus 1 to b dt upon t plus 3 now you take the integration so this is what i is equal to limit b going to infinity what is this ln of t plus 2 minus ln of t plus 3 so which is nothing but ln of t plus 2 upon t plus 3 right because ln of a minus ln of b is ln of a by b 
and what are the limits? Limits are minus 1 to b. Now you apply the limit. So limit b going to infinity, you have ln of b plus 2 upon b plus 3 minus ln of 2 minus 1 is 1 and this is 2. Good. Now you apply the limit. So when you apply the limit, this is infinity by infinity form. So what do you do? You can take out b outside. So when I take out b outside, what do I get? I get 1 plus 2 by b upon 1 plus 3 by b. You take out b common outside from numerator and denominator, it will get cancelled. So this is what you get and this is plus ln of 2. Because 1 upon 2 means what? 2 raised to minus 1. Then minus 1 comes at the front. So this is ln of 2. Okay. Now as b goes to infinity, this goes to 0. So what is left? ln of 1. What is ln of 1? 0. So therefore the answer to this integral is ln of 2. That means this integral will converse to ln of 2. So area is finite. Okay. And this improper integral converges. So whenever you have quadratic kind of stuff, I mean whenever it's not linear, you try to factorize it. And once you factorize, you apply partial fraction technique and then you solve this problem. So I hope this is clear. Now let me give you a couple of homework problems. So here are three homework problems for you. So your job is to solve this problem and you have to tell me the answer. So for this it's straightforward. First apply the definition, then apply FTC2. Here also apply the definition and then you solve this by substitution. Or if you know something about E1 odd function, then this has to be zero. But you tell me what answer you are getting. And here also you can see the product in the denominator. So what is the obvious thing you will do? You will go by partial fraction. So apply the definition and then do partial fraction, separate them, then put the integration inside. The same thing which we did just for the previous problem. So that's the hint for this question. So I hope some of you will definitely comment your answer. And if you have any doubt or if you have any other question for type 1, that also you can ask me. And if everything is clear, then yes, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.